Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Today, and we're back again with a new episode. Today we've got three exciting updates for you. First of all, we'll talk about what's going on with SpaceX's second Starship booster prototype following the news of hot gas thrusters to be seen in SpaceX Starbase. And at the end, we'll talk about a delay in the Transporter 2 mission. Let's begin today's space updates with SpaceX's second Starship booster prototype, which is almost done. All our SpaceX fans might be wondering what's currently going on with SpaceX's Starship program. Here's the thing. SpaceX has been silent for weeks and didn't share any updates regarding its Starship prototype. But we finally got some latest updates of SpaceX Starship booster, which we're about to share. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk recently said that the latest Starship booster prototype is almost done, while the company will shortly begin the work on the first Starship flightworthy booster. When Watchers Tank, a space news agency, tweeted, BN 2.1, SpaceX's super heavy test tank, has been lifted from its testing mount stationed between Pad A and Pad B, with today's road closure canceled, a rollback is now expected in the coming days. As for that, Musk replied, we're almost done with first prototype booster. This will go to test stand A. Next one will fly to orbit. Team's been crushing it many days and nights in a row. It clearly indicates that SpaceX team is working hard to conduct the history-making Starship launch. Musk named the current booster, which is being assembled in Boca Chica, Booster 2. Despite that, the booster intentionally took the name Booster 3 or B3 after replacing its former Booster Number 3 designation. Booster 2 lifted in high bay for stacking on aft section. Also, what looks like a Starship forward dome was sleeved with the unknown section from yesterday. Jack Byer, a spaceflight photographer, tweeted with some photos of the Super Heavy booster. SpaceX already stacked 23 to 24 steel rings. The prototype is now half completed and the overall structure stands about 42 meters tall and 9 meters wide. The booster is expected to reach its full height within three or four weeks from now. Moving on to our next update based on the hot gas thrusters of Starship's Super Heavy Booster. On the 21st of June 2021, Brady Kiniston, a spaceflight photographer, noticed the presence of first hot gas thrusters for Super Heavy in SpaceX's Boca Chica, Texas factory. This new engine does not have any official name, but Musk has referred to this new engine as a hot gas thruster. As known, SpaceX is building those engines to enhance the efficiency of both the Starship spacecraft and Super Heavy boosters. A month earlier, Musk had stated that SpaceX was aiming to have hot gas thrusters on their first flight-worthy Super Heavy booster. Musk had tweeted then, aiming to have hot gas thrusters on the booster for first orbital flight. The present scenario indicates that SpaceX is going to implement it. Sometime earlier, there was a lack of speed in the development of this new form of hot gas thrust engines. SpaceX has mainly developed and used cold gas thrusters, propelled by liquid nitrogen, for most of the purposes. These cold gas thrusters are mainly used by SpaceX for their Falcon rockets to maintain attitude control in space and for safe descent on Earth. SpaceX has even used these cold thrusters for the Starhopper tests. On the series of starships from SN8 to SN15, cold gas thrusters have played a crucial role in their flight tests. The flip maneuver, maintaining stability during free falls back to Earth, and repositioning the vehicle during the landing burn all were carried out by these cold thrusters. SpaceX has eyed orbital flight Starship as the main goal and they didn't see hot gas thrusters as necessary for the orbital flight. Musk had even tweeted, cool but an unnecessary complication for now. These are being removed to speed up time to orbital launch. But after all that, hot gas thruster has better advantages of being used as an attitude controller particularly in space. In all the Starship flights carried out along with cold gas thrusters, the vehicle had to carry liquid nitrogen in separate pressurized vessels, which cost a lot. The hot gas thrusters, on the other hand, will use methane and oxygen as fuel. 
Thus, there's no need to carry separate vessels, and the same fuel of Raptor engines will work on those thrusters only in a high-pressure gaseous form, reducing the weight of the spacecraft by quite a bit along with cost. The cold gas thrusters are also not efficient enough for meeting the needs of a fully stacked Starship with Super Heavy, in comparison to Falcon 9 rockets. According to SpaceX, a hot gas thruster could provide five times more efficiency than a similar cold gas propellant thruster. Musk has even tweeted on that earlier. We'll still use hot gas maneuvering RCS thrusters as about 5x more efficient than nitrogen, 300 seconds versus 60 seconds LSP. So it seems that we can see these hot gas thrusters flying along with Starship during orbital flight. Let's move on to our last update, Space Development Agency sending five satellites for SpaceX's Transporter 2 probable delay in the mission. On the 22nd of June 2021, a senior official of Space Development Agency said, There's nothing in the space business that gets your blood pumping like the idea of a launch, especially if you've got multiple satellites. We're really excited about what's going to happen. The cause of excitement is that the Space Development Agency is sending five satellites riding on SpaceX's Transporter 2 rideshare mission. The agency has partnered with the Air Force Research Laboratory and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to build these experimental satellites. Before the launch on the 25th of June, SpaceX had carried out a static fire test of Falcon Booster B-1060 on the 22nd of June. SpaceX then tweeted after the test that, Static fire test of Falcon 9 complete, targeting launch of SpaceX's second dedicated rideshare mission, Transporter 2, on Friday, June 25th. That static fire lasted for several seconds. Transporter 2 will carry nearly 88 small payloads into the Sun-synchronous orbit. A recent update has come from SpaceX through a tweet that said, Team is taking additional time for pre-launch checkouts ahead of the Transporter 2 mission will announce a new target launch date once confirmed. So it seems that the mission will shift back by one or more days. According to a representative of the Space Development Agency, they've invested nearly $21 million for the experiments they're sending on the Transporter 2 launch. This figure represents a tremendous value to the government of four satellites and a payload. The invaluable information gathered from these experiments will far outpace the monetary investment made up front as we begin to lay the foundation for the national defense space architecture," stated that representative. The five satellites which the agency is sending in the Transporter 2 mission include Mandrake 2, which was earlier planned to launch in Transporter 1, but failed due to damage incurred during payload processing. Mandrake 2 comprises two satellites installed with optical crosslinks. Other two are CubeSats built by General Atomics for the agency. These CubeSats, made by General Atomics, will be used to demonstrate optical intercommunications between satellites and also from satellites to military drones and aircrafts. The agency will first test out the feature by interlinking those satellites and connecting them with an unmanned MQ-9 Reaper drone. The last or the fifth satellite is YAM-3, yet another mission, 3, a commercial satellite built by Loft Orbital, a startup company in San Francisco. Loft Orbital buys satellite buses and leases them in space for those customers who don't have their own satellites to send in space or don't want to undertake the risk of sending self-made satellites. Scientific Systems Company Inc. has won a DARPA contract to send a demonstration satellite to space for Blackjack Program's Pit Boss mission system. The Space Development Agency has currently taken over the experimental program and named it as POET. Thus, Scientific Systems Company, Inc. has looked forward to Loft Orbital for that demonstration satellite. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.